hi everybody welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another episode of married at first sight episode three season 11 it's not the first time so i'm a couple of weeks behind uh so bear with me now this episode was a continuation of the other week i can't say last week because i'm behind a little bit but it's a continuation of i think the previous week's episode where we're still with the wedding ceremonies um we're doing a, a continuation of amelia and bennett and we get to find out where they met before because they when they saw each other at the altar they recognized each other so after the wedding ceremony which was nice it was a really nice little ceremony Amelia read him a poem and I thought the poem was really sweet I think these two people are just a match made in heaven so she reads him a poem that was her wedding vow her personal wedding vow to him it was a poem and it was really nice it was beautiful and so when they get a chance to sit down and talk to each other they realize that they had met before and they met at a party before and Bennett had told her that you know what I've seen you somewhere else and he asked her if she had attended some type of a band performance at some venue and it ended up being that she did remember seeing him perform with his band so they crossed paths two times in their lives and now they're married happily married it seems like at least so far so they meet each other's friends and family everything is fine with that um Bennett's mom I think she was the one she gave a speech at the reception wow she was <laughs> i'm used to speeches being kind of relaxed and jokes and you know or extremely heartfelt her speech was very serious i mean it was almost like an essay or something her speech was really intense um but of course there's a lot of love there that she has for her son i like the fact that they bennett he this is something that caught my attention when bennett said that he doesn't really uh he hasn't he, he's had a hard time finding you know the right girl or the right relationship and he doesn't feel that instant connection right away but with Amelia he does he felt that instant attraction to her that instant connection to her and he said that was very rare for him so that you know gives me a lot of hope for them and she seems to be also very attracted to him as well and I think a good word to describe Amelia would be whimsical someone has said that she was very whimsical which is true she's very very whimsical and as they were talking um she mentioned her armpit hair and she asked him if that was a problem for him and he hadn't even noticed okay he hadn't even noticed but now that she brought it to his attention he was like no i don't have a problem with it i don't have an issue with it at all he was fine with it he said in fact it showed how much confidence she has as a woman um to do that so wonderful he accepts her as she is and she accepts him as he is and it's, it's a match made in heaven i can't wait to see them progress and like i said before i love bennett next we go to christina and henry now this one i have a lot a lot a lot of notes with christina and henry because they gave me the most uh pressure christina to me um is not a very likable person but then henry also is not that approachable either so you have these two people who kind of christina seems i don't want to use the b word but she seems a kind of standoffish um not very warm or inviting or open um or easy to approach that's how she comes across to me and Henry is very shy, reserved. He's very awkward. He doesn't make a lot of eye contact. You can tell that he does like his he's always looking down and that is a sign right away that he has, you know, he likes confidence. And he mentioned it himself several times that he lost a lot of weight. He used to be, you know, pretty chubby, but he lost a lot of weight and he never gained any confidence when the weight was gone. And you can tell that he has no confidence because he's constantly looking down at the floor. He rarely makes eye contact. And when they were sitting at the bride and groom table, the dinner table, um, I mean, the con it was like pulling teeth for Christina to get him to talk. He just was not very talkative. He didn't ask her a lot of questions. Um, she had to ask him if he thought she looked pretty because he just, you know, normally in about 99% of these um, uh, shows, when the bride appears, the man will always remark on how beautiful she looks, but he didn't because he just doesn't, he's got that social awkwardness, big time social awkwardness. 
um, I was waiting for a moment after the ceremony because I get it when you're nervous at the ceremony and I get it that you could be nervous throughout the whole entire reception but at some point I need you to kind of loosen up a tiny bit you don't have to go you know buck wild but I need you to kind of loosen up your shoulders a little bit sit back in your chair a little bit you know try to make some type of conversation with your new wife but it just it just wasn't happening and the funny thing about that also is that he's friends with Trishel now when I saw Trishel appear on the screen I immediately recognized her I was like oh my god that's Trishel from the real world Las Vegas I don't know how many years ago 10 15 years ago I don't know and I was like she's friends with Henry like how did that happen because I remember when she was on the real world she was wild Trishel was out there wild drinking partying I mean she 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 was wild and to see that her and Henry are friends and she had there were other the other girls that were there as well who were friends with him they were more like Trishel you know kind of wild and stuff and they were friends of Henry and I was like how 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 does this reserved quiet you know no confidence having young man how does he hang out with this wild bunch of women but whatever to each his own and I didn't like how they approached Trishel and the other girlfriend I don't like how they approached Christina because I think they're a little tipsy also so they probably didn't couldn't tell that she just really wasn't you know that welcoming to them but I didn't think Christina cared for them that much and I hope that they're not too involved or entrenched in Henry's life to make it a problem for Christina but I don't know they may all become the best of friends I have no idea but I was shocked to see that Henry and Trishel were friends Trishel from the real world Las Vegas that says it all right there now I also want to mention the bridesmaids dresses I didn't understand the bridesmaids dresses on their own were fine were okay but as bridesmaids dresses in a wedding and standing next to the bride they were just too busy I mean they were very colorful they had a lot of patterns a lot of very colorful and it was just very distracting it was taking attention away from the beautiful gown that Christina had which I you know I liked her gown a lot but those bridesmaids dresses were just too too busy way too busy to be bridesmaids dresses I think bridesmaids dresses really should have like a solid color um, obviously all one color maybe you might distinguish the matron of honor or the maiden of honor but basically they should all be very uniform to make the bride stand out even more but the brides the bride's gown was just lost the wedding dress was just lost among those bridesmaids dresses um so what else basically i just need henry to wake up a little bit i need henry to to be present you know to get out of his head get out of the clouds wherever he's at he's not present i need him to be present and to join us and to interact with the people around him with the humans around him now the funny thing is is that his dad he gave a speech at the reception his dad is very boisterous very talkative um his dad has a sense of humor it's like henry you couldn't pick up none of that from your dad the only thing you picked up from your dad was you know um his eating habits because you know his dad's a big guy and um but henry lost all that weight Oh, and another thing, Christina called him Luke. She couldn't remember his name, which I thought was awful. Just awful. This is your wedding day. You're meeting your husband-to-be, your husband for the very first time. Make an effort to remember his name. You know, make an effort to remember his name. But she kept on calling him Luke. She couldn't remember his name. And she thought the whole thing was funny. But Henry did not give her a lot to work with because he was mute and um, in his own world. He wasn't there. So... I guess it's understandable that she would forget his name. Then we go to Karen and Miles. So we already saw the majority of their ceremony the other week. Now we're going to see how they interact with each other's families and friends at the reception. It was fine. Um, Karen's mom went to go talk to Miles and she said that I'm not really on board with this whole married at first sight process, 
but um, of course she, she went along with it but she definitely let Miles know that she was not on board with this so that told me that she was going to keep her real good eye on Miles and make sure that he doesn't you know do anything to hurt her daughter so you know Miles to me I, I don't think Miles will intentionally you know hurt her or do anything crazy um, he really looks like someone who's going to give it his all I just hope that um, Karen is going to be receptive because she's also someone who's like, I guess it's just that they're nervous or something. And I don't understand if you're that nervous where you can't even really make small talk. Why are you on a reality TV show? Why are you getting married to a stranger of all things? You're not on a game show, okay? You're not on a cooking show or something. You are on a show where there's going to be physical contact. There's You're making a legal commitment for the rest of your life to someone. There's going to be tons of other people. There's going to be experts who are always gonna be wanting your opinion, wanting you to express your feelings your mate is going to want to talk to you and conversate with you and want you to express your feelings like why are you sitting there mute so watching her scenes with miles is a little you know uncomfortable because you can tell how hard he's trying and how reserved and closed off she is but i see that she's trying as well she did say she was attracted to him now this was at the end when they were all going into their hotel rooms she did mention that she did feel an attraction for him which i was really happy for and then she asked him she asked him do you rub feet and of course he said yes because miles is a pleaser and he started rubbing her feet and i think she said well i didn't mean for you to rub them right now i just wanted you wanted to know if you rubbed feet i think that's what it was i could be wrong maybe she didn't want him to rub her feet at that moment and um at the reception when they were at the when he, when she was talking to his parents um they alluded to the fact that miles might be a mama's boy and this kind of goes into how she didn't like his Instagram stories because he's he was very uh, he was very emotional and is and it, you know very emotional person. So when she was speaking with his parents and you know they kept telling him that he was very very close to his mother that he was a mama's boy he talks to his mom several times a day. I wonder how Karen felt about that you know because Karen is not into men who are emotional. And it seems like she wants a man who, um, quote unquote, is more, I, I don't want to say more masculine, but I, don't, I can't think of the word, I guess. But not to say that masculine men cannot be emotional. Of course they can, and they are. But I guess she wants a man who's not as sensitive. And when we think of mama's boys, we think of boys who are probably a little bit more sensitive than the, I don't know, maybe not. But that whole conversation that she was having with his parents i didn't you know that made me feel awkward it didn't make me feel any better about their future um i feel like miles is gonna go above and beyond to connect with her to get more in touch with her and she is just not gonna give him what he's looking for um and i don't think she's even gonna be doing it intentionally i think that's just how she is you know um that's how i predict how their situation is going to go that he's just going to try and try and try to you know bring out you know her inner soul her personality her emotions and she's just going to be just stuck in her head or wherever she's at but karen and miles makes me a little bit uncomfortable i don't have much hope for them 13 minutes y'all olivia and brett Okay, I'm not buying Olivia and Brett. I'm trying to go with the flow. I'm trying to believe them. I'm trying so hard to believe Brett when he says that he likes her, he's into her, he's attracted to her. This is his type of woman, but I'm just not feeling that at all. I'm just not. And I'm hoping that they're gonna completely surprise me at the end. But Olivia and Brett reminds me so much of, um, the couple last season where the guy didn't even move into the apartment at all. He was that, you know, not into his wife. He, he couldn't even live with her. Um, I forgot their names, of course. Um, that's, his name was Zach, Mindy, Zach and Mindy. So Olivia and Brett kind of remind me of Zach and Mindy where she's so into him, but I can't see him being that into her. I don't see it. 
I see him saying the right words, just like Zach, but I don't see a lot of feeling behind those words. So like when the other couples talk about how attracted they are to each other, I see it, I, I believe it. I don't believe it with Brett. Olivia, I believe that she is attracted to him. I believe that she is into him, just like Mindy was more into Zach than Zach was into her. So to me, Olivia and Brett are kind of like the new Zach and Mindy. But I know, I know, I know that Brett is not going to do all the crazy, horrific things that Zach did to Mindy. But I'm just not buying it. And a fun fact about Olivia, she loves Lil Wayne. She really, 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 really loves Lil Wayne almost done Woody and Imani yes my favorite couple next to um Amelia and Bennett Woody and Imani oh my god okay so the thing I want to say about them we already saw their wedding ceremony so we're just going to talk about how they kind of you know mingled with their friends and family when Woody was talking to Imani's two dads her biological dad and her stepdad her bonus dad the fact that he opened up to them and said that I didn't grow up with a dad and so now I feel like I'm getting two dads as well. I almost melted. It was so sweet to me that he was willing to be so open and vulnerable, you know, to talk about his past. And for them to accept him and for him to look forward to forming a, he's excited about getting two father-in-laws. He's so excited about it. And they are so receptive of him. And I just, that to me that that scene stole the show that stole the show for me and when Woody there was a scene one of those montages where uh they captured a scene where he kissed Imani on her shoulder now y'all the shoulder kiss <laughs> that was it for me I love that 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 sweet delicate soft shoulder kiss that he gave her I love Woody and Imani. And on top of all of that, I love New Orleans. I've never been, but every time I see New Orleans, it just seems like a ball of fun. Now, when they had the um, the band come out and then they had everyone had like the, um, the, the bride and the groom have the umbrellas or the parasols or whatever. And everybody was dancing and they had the the band, the marching band come in for every single wedding they had a marching band and everybody was dancing and going outside it just looked like so much fun i mean i love not only is new orleans a really beautiful beautiful city because you can tell that it kept a lot of its um old world style it kept a lot of that it is so beautiful to look at it looks like the people are so much fun it's like its own little country its own little bubble or something i just love new orleans and so the ending of that episode with the line i call it, i want to say line dancing with the um with the band and the dancing and the parasol i just loved it it was just so beautiful to me it was so wonderful and of course we end with everybody going into their individual hotel rooms um, each couple going into their own hotel room and us trying to figure out, you know, who's going to consummate the marriage, who's not going to consummate the marriage. And um, so we'll see what happens next week. So I'm going to watch episode four and I'll be back. Thanks for watching. Bye.